A very warm welcome to you today on this Valentine's Day. Uh, you are tuned into the social show with myself, Uwe Cholwana, and I'm with you for the next 30 minutes talking to you about all things CSI, CSR, as well as CSV. Of course, it's a day of love, so I'm spreading love and light to all of you um, everywhere that you are. I hope you are receiving and giving uh, goodness and good memories and love and, and honesty and and just, just good vibrations. More than that, I also want to just um, take some time to remember our, uh, you know, I think Valentine's Day, as much as it is a beautiful day, it's also important that we remember the story of Steve, uh, Steve, uh, uh, Riva Stienkamp uh, and uh, her tragedy on this day, on this morning, and uh, just give some homage to her and just to say, you know, just be safe out there. Love is supposed to be good and happy and f- and 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 uh, safe. And if it isn't, I I suggest you leave that relationship. But more than that, um, I hope you stay safe and I hope you are not uh, being, you're not in a situation that you don't want to be in. Uh, with that being said, we're going to start off the day with the news and then we're going to carry on with uh, the show. WESA has launched a new environmental education program for schools called LEAF, Learning About Forests. The international program encourages learners and communities to take ownership of creating healthy surroundings by engaging with their local forests and planting indigenous trees. Learners on the program also plant food and fruit forests uh, as outdoor classrooms to support existing structures in schools and communities. WESA launched the LEAF program for schools. The, uh, the program was launched uh, earlier this month at the Pretoria National Botanical Gardens with the introduction of the Our Forests and Our Future campaign to a number of teachers, learners, local government representatives, nurseries, other NGOs, and the Gauteng Environmental Education Forum. The campaign is a joint initiative of the Wessa Leaf Program and Johannesburg-based NGO School Forest Project who will supply 100 trees to 10 schools from Yesteras, Mamelodi, Tswane East participating in the Leaf Program for 2018. In other news, the Nelson Mandela Bay municipality is banking on boreholes as the short-term solution to drought. But water experts have warned that this could spell out problems for the city in the long term. With about 500 boreholes registered throughout the city, two Nelson Mandela University experts have called for caution because over-abstraction from the underground water table may lead to contamination of the supply in less than 10 years. NMU acting botany head Dr. Pumlile Gama says boreholes received water from limited underground sources. Eastern Cape Borehole Services owner Eric Kritzinger said the majority of boreholes being drilled were in Millpark, Warmer and Summerstrand. The depth of the boreholes varies between suburbs. And lastly, in our news launched last year, the My School, My Village, My Planet's Dream to Teach Scholarship Fund has now awarded its first scholarships to Ronald Strout from Lakoff in the Free State, as well as Timoni Danielle from Friedendel in the Western Cape. Thanks to the funds, My School supporters swiping their cards when they shop at participating retailers. These two aspirant teachers will begin a journey in high-quality tertiary education that will make their dreams of teaching come true. The Dream to Teach Scholarship uh, Fund has partnered with Make a Difference Leadership Foundation to comprehensively support Dimini as well as Renal throughout their four extensive years of study ahead of them. And that concludes our news for the day. What is individual social responsibility? Social responsibility is about me, you, and us. It is about our actions, how we affect people, the community, and the environment around us. What if we all accepted responsibility for the challenges that our communities face? What if we challenged ourselves to create positive impact with every action we take? Just like businesses focus on corporate social responsibility, JCI members are challenged to focus on individual social responsibility. We all have rights as citizens, but we also have responsibilities. The JCI Active Citizen Framework is a social plan that serves as a roadmap to sustainable development. That is what social responsibility is about. It is about me, you, and all of us taking responsibility for the future of our world, starting from our local community. So we have this philosophy, we call it our planet promise, that if we were to leave this planet, if we no longer existed, or more 
Specifically, if we were no longer operating in a specific town or country, we wanted to make sure that the people around us, the stakeholders of the company would say, wow, we really miss this company. That's why climate and environment is becoming more important because maybe the citizens will say it was a great place to work for. We made some money, they paid their taxes, but still you'd look at the aftermath of such a company and say, wow, they produced a lot of waste or a very negative environmental impact. So now we're really very focused on, on that piece. The investment in wind turbines will actually produce as much energy as we expect to consume of energy when we forecast into the year uh, 2020. So we'll have a one-to-one -one between the energy we consume and the energy, uh, renewable energy being produced. That's the major benefit of this investment. We're very focused on waste in the manufacturing process. We have an ambition to be able to recycle all the waste we produce. We're currently at 90%. Uh, Lego bricks are made of plastic and plastic is a material there's a lot of focus on both from a safety angle in terms of what chemicals are inside plastics, but also in terms of recycling or how are they disposed of at end of life. And we are looking into recycling uh, solutions. The feedback we're getting from a lot of consumers is though that they never throw away their Lego bricks, they keep them for future generations. And I do think this durability of the legal product is a major strength, but still we need to think about good environmental solutions from end to end of the life of the brick. Well, you're back on The Social Show, and today I've got uh, somebody on the line who's going to be talking to us a little bit about a really great partnership, uh, Menon Park Shopping Centre. Illuminated its Cavendish uh, Court, entertaining thousands of guests during the past holiday season with the aim of helping the countless number of children living with traumatic facial conditions. Now, this was through its uh, Christmas out-of-this-world activities that made the December shopping experience memorable and magical for the entire family. Menon Park Shopping Centre was able to raise funds for the Smile um, Foundation and these funds were raised when customers bought um, Disney plushes from the center that were displayed on a Christmas tree. Now customers were also exposed to the unique science, uh, science experience, a train ride and photos with uh, Santa during this time. And today I'm joined by uh, the general manager of Menlin Mall in Pretoria. If you haven't been to Menlin, it's actually so beautiful and so big now. And um, I'm so excited about this partnership that they have now with the Smile Foundation. And we've been talking a little bit about the implication that the money donated to the Smile Foundation by Menlin um, Mall it will have on uh, the children at Smile Foundation who you must know have... Um, have really traumatic experiences with facial conditions. And today we're talking to Olive Ndebele. Uh, I think she's on the line. Good morning, Olive. She's not on the line. Okay, so we'll call her back a little bit later. But again, I'm very, very excited about um, this amazing partnership with uh, Menlin um, and Smile Foundation. I've known Smile Foundation sorry, for quite a while. And um, I've, I've actually worked with them on a couple of things or tried to work with them on a couple of things. And I know that they've always really made the, their mission to really help children who are living with um, th these facial conditions to really be able to, to, to enjoy the rest of their lives. I think nothing brings more dignity to a child than uh, getting them, you know, through the early, the ECD phases, the, the high school phases, the primary school phases with some sort of confidence. And that's what I love about the Smile Foundation. And everyone deserves to smile. Everyone feels, should feel good when they smile, uh, when they when they put on a smile. And uh, Min and Park's check handover to the Smile Foundation is definitely one way of getting more children uh, to smile. I wonder if Olive is still on the line, uh, still restruggling to get a hold of her. So, um we're just going to take a short break and then we're going to come back. Uh, hopefully, Olive will answer the phone. And if she doesn't, oh well, we'll, uh, we'll carry on with the day. The jobs and economy of the future will be urban. By 2030, 60% of the global population will live in cities. To ensure decent work and economic growth, local leaders face many challenges. 40 million jobs need to be created every year for young people entering the labour market. Depending on the developing region, between 45 and 90% of workers are in the informal economy. 
there are 168 million children in child labour worldwide. Women's average wages are between 4 to 36% less than men's. Many local governments are already taking action, fostering community participation and social dialogue between employers and workers, including in the informal economy, adapting and responding to economic trends and challenges, promoting entrepreneurship, job-oriented policies, innovation and labour protection, and learning from one another through city-to-city -city cooperation. Local and regional governments do all this to ensure inclusive and sustainable economic growth, employment and decent work for all. Which is Goal 8 of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Achieving SDG 8 depends on local governments. So as I said, we were trying to get a hold of Olive, uh, who is the head or the general manager of Midland Mall, um, just to talk to us a little bit about their collaboration with Smile Foundation. In fact, they gave them a large sum of money um, quite recently um, to help them with their work. A little bit about the Smile Foundation. Now, Smile Foundation is a South African non-governmental organization with a comprehensive health care vision for children living with facial condition uh, conditions. And Smile Foundation, together with the country's academic hospitals, work together to put uh, the Smile back onto the children's faces with corrective facial or constructive treatments. Um, they help children in need of surgery for treatable facial anomalies such as cleft lip, um, cleft palate, nose and ear conditions, facial paralysis, uh, which is called Mobius syndrome, burn wounds and craniofacial abnormalities. And even though they're a charity for children, they understand that parents want nothing more than to help their children in need and cannot do so because of financial restrictions. Um, and I think that's one of the saddest things when you think about um, the health space is that a lot of the time, as much as you, um, as a as a child, as, as as a really struggling parent, especially if you're in the previously disadvantaged brackets, um, you know, your child having a, a a cleft lip or a cleft palate is often something that you really can't do much about, especially when you're only like focusing on them going to school. You're focusing on th giving them something to eat. Um, you're focusing on their futures, you're focusing on those kinds of things. It's very difficult from a health perspective to really fix or have some reconstructive surgery. And I think it's such a beautiful thing that the Smile Foundation has been doing and has done to not only increase um, confidence in the child, as I said before, but to positively increase the quality of life as Africans, um, as Africa's disadvantaged families, by encouraging, informing, and educating, uh, you know, parents throughout the process. Um, they are also um, based in eleven of the best academic hospitals in South Africa, and uh, continually um, need support of their teams, and, and and always need qualified, compassionate medical staff by investing, um, who, who invest rather their skills in development programs. I think also if you are in the health industry and um, you're sort of looking for a way in which you can um, uh, contribute to uh, you know CSI or CSR as well as shared value in some sort of way I think um, I always say stick to what you're good at and I think this is a great um, 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 initiative it's a great charity that not only helps children but also helps the, you know a specific physical um, um, you know part of, of of life that a lot of kids you know you're not you can't you don't choose to have a cleft palate cleft lip or nose or ear condition or some sort of paralysis in your mouth and god forbid anything happens to you um you get burnt or your child gets burnt and you really can't help them with reconstructive surgery i think um if you are in that space the smile foundation is your best bet they are really really doing a good job um you know they are really putting uh their their money um you know in in the future of our children and, and and not only in a way that is you know um just contribution and donation you actually do see the the joy uh quite quite visibly in 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 the in the children and in the smiles of the children and i think it's very important your chief patron was the late honorable nelson mandela um, who supported the Smile Foundation and his wish was also to reach as many children as possible the late madiba was also proudly associated with with um this this charity because he does he did and he and we all knew, know that his fundamental um core values were in the future were in the children so it always makes sense um whenever i see these kinds of um partnerships whether it's a, a mall giving to the, to the smile foundation whether it's celebrities whether it's um 
uh, just individuals, public and private, giving back to this specific cause. I always feel like it's another way in which we can see that, um, you know, um, the corporate space is not forgetting, um, really not forgetting the, the, the core the people that need support, which are the children, the future. Um, if we are to reach these NDP goals that we so badly want, if we are to reach our Vision 2030, we need to always be cognizant of what our children are going through and how we can re- re- you know, alleviate as much from the path so that they can be who they were meant to be. And it really does disappoint me that uh, Olive is not answering the phone because we were going to have a great conversation around their contribution with um, um, their, their Christmas, um, uh, you know, extravaganza and how it sort of impacted on uh the smile foundation and it would have been a really great interview to have with her but unfortunately she is unavailable but hopefully we'll have her another day um but before we get into things to remember i just want to remind you that if you do want to get involved with the smile foundation please don't be afraid to do so at www.smilefoundation.org or you can just send me a tweet on at brand live radio or you can call me on 011-083-8606 or send me an email at press at social-tv.co.za. We're going to take a short break, but we're going to be back after this. In order to do more uh, for your people, your community, or to have the social impact that we're trying to have, I think one thing is clear. Performance is the price of admission. If Starbucks did not perform and we didn't create value for our shareholders, we couldn't do these things. Just striving to make a profit and building value for one constituent, I just don't think it's sustainable. And I'm not here to preach to another company or another business person. I'm just here to say this is what we do, this is what we believe in, this is what we think is right. And if you can take anything from our playbook, we're, we're open. Here it is. We, we have no secret sauce. We have no technology. We're built on a foundation of humanity. It's When Secretary Gates came on the Starbucks board, I think he gave me a great uh, tutorial on the fact that two and a half million young men and women, extraordinary young men and women, were wearing the cloth of the nation, and less than 1% of the American public had any skin in the game. And I went to Jesus, I went to Walter Reed, I went to the Intrepid, and I saw firsthand, we've got a real problem. I said, let's do two things. Let's do everything we can as a company to hire veterans and their spouses. And then I give great credit to my wife, Sherry, to say, uh, as part of our family foundation, let's make a very significant contribution to veterans coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan. Let's help them in transitional services. In addition to the issues around race relations in America, there's a significant underlying problem of 5.6 million youth in America, mostly black and Latino, who are not in school, not working, and you can say are hopeless. And we said, wait a minute, could we convene a number of companies and start having job fairs on a regional basis and really make a difference? As, and as sappy as it may sound to others, we're a performance-driven company through the lens of humanity. That's who we are. Well, you must know what that sound always uh, signifies. And it's, of course, just close to the end of the show. And that always makes me sad. But more than that, it definitely is uh, things to remember time. And, of course, this is the part of the show where we speak a little bit about what it is you can remember um, and take with you during the day and just remember about a company about a concept about an idea that is around uh, csi csv as well as responsibility social responsibility social entrepreneurship whatever the case may be something you can think about something to inspire you um for the day we're going to play the clip and then i'm going to speak a little bit about it afterwards So we have this philosophy, we call it our planet promise, that if we were to leave this planet, if we no longer existed, or more specifically, if we were no longer operating in a specific town or country, we wanted to make sure that the people around us, the stakeholders of the company would say, wow, we really miss this company. That's why climate and environment is becoming more important because maybe the citizens will say it was a great place to work for, we made some money, they paid their taxes, but still, You'd look at the aftermath of such a company and say, wow, 
they produced a lot of waste or a very negative environmental impact. So now we're really very focused on, on that piece. The investment in wind turbines will actually produce as much energy as we expect to consume of energy when we forecast into the year uh, 2020. So we'll have a one-to-one -one between the energy we consume and the energy uh, renewable energy being produced. That's the major benefit of this investment. We're very focused on waste in the manufacturing process. We have an ambition to be able to recycle all the waste we produce. We're currently at 90%. Uh, Lego bricks are made of plastic and plastic is a material there's a lot of focus on both from a safety angle in terms of what chemicals are inside plastics but also in terms of recycling or how are they disposed of at end of life and we are looking into recycling uh, solutions the feedback we're getting from a lot of consumers is though that they never throw away their lego bricks they keep them for future generations and i do think this durability of the lego product is a major strength but still we need to think about good environmental solutions from end to end of the life of the brick. And that was the CEO of Lego speaking a little bit about the Planet Promise project, which I think is so important. And what it really aims to do is put children first. As a provider of play experiences, they have said that they want to ensure that their behavior and their actions are responsible towards all children, but more than that, towards the world. And I love what he said a little bit about, um, um, you know, how Lego has always sort of transformed um, from generation to generation, from just being this plastic game that you can play to being something that is a little bit more essential, um, essential uh, provider of play experiences that makes sure that it's a responsible to the stakeholders, society and the environment. And um, the fact that Lego now can be used for generations after, it's not just something that you can melt or throw away or anything like that. It is um, aimed to inspire children. It's aimed to be environmentally, um, uh, have an environmental impact on, on, on society. Um, they're addressing climate change by reducing their emissions through improving their energy efficiency and how they make Legos nowadays in, in, in the new age. And um, there's so much people people can do to join the Lego Planet crew and help build a greener planet and i thought it would be important for us to think about the toys that you give your children what what are you buying and how does it work for you does it work for you from a recycling perspective can it work for you from a uh, from an environmental perspective are you looking at organic toys and and games for your children that's something to think just to definitely think about and if you are please let me know on uh, a brand live radio and of course that closes off the show for the day it's very unfortunate that olive couldn't be on the show but uh if you do want to get involved with smile foundation i think you should definitely give them a call or a ring or an email and uh, i hope you learned something today i hope you have a beautiful valentine's day and i'll be back again same time same place only on the social show